Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Catholic Talk Show. Today, we're going to be talking about church blessings. That's right. The Catholic Church has a blessing for just about everything, from a crucifix to bacon. And we're going to tell you who can bless what, what can be blessed, and how it's done. I mean, with a book this size, <laughs> there's a lot of blessings. <laughs> Bacon. I'm, <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> hey, I smell bacon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, today, I mean, we're going to take a look at blessings, right? The Catholic Church, I mean, there's so many things. It's like, you know, you get a blessing for this, you get a blessing for that. But we're going to look at a little bit of the theology behind blessings, what the different types of blessings are, what a blessing even is meant to do. And we're going to have some fun and bless some things. It's one of the perks of knowing a priest. If you're friends with them, you can get them blessed about just about anything. And the church has an official blessing for it. Yeah, and there's and there's reserved blessings all the way up to the Pope, to bishops, to parish priests, and then even to lay people to realize that in virtue of your baptism as an adopted child of God, mm -hmm. you have rights too. And the extension of blessings are, are proper to many, many people, and they just don't under, they don't understand that capacity. So we're going to crack open all that and, and make sure that you are practicing to the fullest of your capability. I bless people when they sneeze. Do you really? Yeah. It's a sneeze. You. Bless you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> so I, again, I always think it's a good place to start with blessings, you know, or to start in the catechism when we're talking about it. Um, and there's a few things to understand about blessings is that uh, I guess there's two types of blessings, all right? The first is constitutive. And these are blessings that are meant to last, right? Or kind of change the character of a thing, whether it's blessing an altar, uh, whether that's blessing a crucifix or a rosary. This is a blessing that really becomes you know, turning it into something of a distinct and unique character. Then there's invocative blessings. Those are the types of things like that are temporal in nature. Okay, you're about to travel. You're about to bless something that's consumable. Uh, blessing your food, blessing yourself, uh, blessing somebody before they go to sleep. You know, those are all invocative blessings that are meant to be tied to a time and place, you know? Hmm. Um, Father Rich, what do you... How often do you do like blessings? You know, I mean, every, every day, every is day, priest, you know? yeah, every day. Um, and really, in the priestly authority that that I've been commissioned to care, especially as a pastor over my whole community, Catholic, non Catholic, everybody here intentionally, whether they know it or not, is receiving my blessing because I, I want to pour out benevolently as a, as a pastor called to that graciousness of God to extend blessings over those that I'm, I'm responsible for. Mm -hmm. um, and that's everybody within these parish boundaries, you know, in St. John Paul II. Mm -hmm. And I offer my blessings, too, to the people out there on the web, you know, on the digital continent. Well, hold on, hold on. Only save those blessings for the people who are going to hit that subscribe button. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you hit, click that button, subscribe on YouTube. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And a big shout out to all of our followers and a lot of love and blessings and abundance for our patrons. Our financial supporters of the show help us to create this content and this beautiful environment of our of our studio. We're most grateful. If you're considering becoming a financial supporter of the show, go to catholictalkshow.com forward slash Patreon. There you'll see every way that you could support us. We have all these different tiers and really cool content, new coffee cups. I mean, look at that thing. It's beautiful. I do love our new coffee cups. <laughs> so we want to send you that cool gear. So be a patron and a big thank you to each and every one of you guys for supporting us in prayer because we should bless each other. And I love in, in Hispanic traditions, you know, that calling for bendición, you know, like, you know, bless me. Mm -hmm. And, and that, uh, that sense of offering blessings to one another is truly a gift and, uh, wishing the very best from God's hands mm -hmm. in creation to all of his created order. So what really is a blessing? A blessing, typically, it, it's a right. It's a it's a right where you are taking, uh, you're saying a prayer over a specific person, object, or for a specific intent um, by a priest, right? To be able to confer or bishop or pope, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Who are mm -hmm. priests of a yep. mm -hmm. notch above this one here? <laughs> That's for sure. Um, they exercise what's called the fullness of the priesthood. Yes, you are. 
You are a half empty glass. <laughs> <laughs> I like to look at it like half full, but okay, okay I'll take whatever. it. I'll take it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> this holy know, water's full. That is a blessing will give a character to an item for a specific use. They don't confer grace like a sacrament, like the the, the Eucharist or like a baptism, where you're actually getting the grace of the Holy Spirit. Things that are blessed, objects that are blessed, are meant to help you dispose yourself to receive the blessing of the sacraments and receive the blessing of the, of the Trinity. So it's more like a preparatory blessing as far as it's a sacramental, not a sacrament. And that's a, that's a big distinction. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. have to use holy water every time you bless something? It's, it's called, it does, it's not necessary. Like I could bless, Rubrics, yeah, right. I could bless without, but. Like how could you bless holy water with holy water? No. Wow. All right. Mind blown. Boom. Boom. But no, it's it's really I, I like having holy water. I have holy water in my car wherever I go. Um, you know, I can obviously prepare holy water if if I'm in yeah. a hospital setting or something. I don't have holy water on me. Um, but yeah, a lot of the rituals call for it mm -hmm. um, as an option. Another thing that that uh, people may not know, the use of incense at times is is um, you know used for benediction, like like and a blessing mm -hmm. of a statue, for example. So we, yeah. we recently blessed this beautiful statue of Our Lady of Guadalupe in our parish, and she's so fitting for what we do here at the talk show because we've consecrated our work to her, and incense was used in, in, in the benediction uh, process. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm sure one of the things that you get asked a lot to bless most is like like a home, right? Mm -hmm. When somebody moves in. Actually, do you know what it is? The most is like religious objects, like uh, mm -hmm. miraculous that, medals, crosses, rosaries, a lot, and mm -hmm. and um, or you know, Father, I'm I'm really I really could use your blessing because, you know, I'm I'm carrying this weight in my heart. I'm struggling with this or that. And uh, can you please can you pray over me and can you give me a give me your blessing? Mm -hmm. um, that probably happens more frequently than homes. <coughs> I do I do love a good house blessing, though. So we'll get back to homes, but I think it's a good point that you brought up is that, so like when you buy a new rosary, you buy a new holy medal, you buy uh, a new crucifix, those are all things that don't come blessed, right? As a matter of fact, they it's, shouldn't come blessed. it's against canon law yeah. to sell blessed right. items. But when you get a new rosary, you get a new crucifix, you really should take it to your priest and have it blessed. Uh, uh. What, what's that like? What, what happens in, in the blessing of a religious item? Mm -hmm. I, I love, you know, like, for example, like a scapular, right? Mm -hmm. There's like a whole rite, right. you know? And then literally clothing someone in the habit, <laughs> you know, of, the, of Mount Carmel, you yeah. know, Our Lady of Mount Carmel beautiful devotion. Um, so, you know, that ritual is, is, is standing there. And as a Catholic priest, as a, as a diocesan priest, I'm not Carmelite, but I have, I have the ability to do that as well right. as a deacon to be able to confer right. someone with the holy habit mm -hmm, of yeah. Mount Carmel. That's cool. Um, so th that I really love miraculous medals. I really love, you we know, just got, uh, our whole family got miraculous medals. And uh, there, there's actually a blessing for the miraculous metal too. There well. is, yeah. there is. So some of these, some of these blessings have their specific own uh, uh, ritual and rite uh, associated with it. Um, other devotions, you know, just extending blessed blessings over a a sacred image mm -hmm. of, yeah, of something divine. So the, that rites in here as well, and, like and then you could associate, yeah, yeah, you could associate it to particular like the Our Lady of Chestahova icon that we have in our in our uh, chapel as well, in our shrine, in our in our, in studio. our studio, our chapel shrine studio. <laughs> Again, we want to thank our patrons <laughs> for this chapel shrine studio <laughs> that we have going on in here. Um, but yeah. Like there, there is, uh, you can suit it for a particular image and then it gives you like the letter N with a period right. to fit Bless into that ritual image. Bless exactly. Parenthetically, they have yeah. it within the, the paragraph of the, of the prayer of blessing. Mm -hmm. Or even when you're seeing like a blessing of a, of a person, they'll say, and it'll be that person's name. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which would be really confusing if a person's <laughs> name was N. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what does a blessing actually do? It, it, there's kind of four things that a blessing accomplishes. Again, they're not sacraments, but uh, they're meant to do this. It's the uh, the excitation of like piety, right? To really get you to be uh, more aligned with a particular 
you know, whether it's a devotion, whether it's a rosary, whether it's a crucifix. Um, and then there's also, with that, like a blessed crucifix, there can be the remission of venial sins, right? Kind of like the the general absolution at the Mass. That can be associated with it. Uh, a blessing also helps free people or an object to be used against the battle of evil spirits. Yeah, the battle between good and evil and, and you know, to ward off, you That's know, right. those provocations. Yeah, I mean, you, you bless something, demons don't want no part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. They flee. They don't like it. They go away. Well, you know, like, you guys bust my chops all the time here, but, you know, they call me the Mr. T <laughs> of priests, but... We call you the David Lee Roth of priests. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, oh like for me, God. like Holy every crap, holy the flame. Out here. There we go. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. But, you know, like my scapular, shout out scapulars.com. It's a nice scapular. I nice tell scapular. you what, man, it is the best scapular I've ever worn. Yeah. And it's strong, like bull. And then, you know, I have my oils for the infirmed, my OI, my OS, my oil for the sick. Mm -hmm. um, I carry it every single day with my miraculous medal, my grandfather's uh, dog tags. And then my crucifix, you know, that says on the back, Cruzada de Amor a Jesus Crucificado, the crusade of love of Jesus the Crucified. And the year on it is the birth year of my grandparents. But, you know, when I put this on in the morning every single day, it's like it's reminding me that sense of like that piety I'm called to and being commissioned as a crusader of love mm -hmm. of Christ crucified. And I'm, I'm commissioned with the oils of bringing healing to the sick and, and to commission people through death into life. Mm -hmm. And and these sacramentals and the miraculous medal of Our Lady and the scapular and the promises therein, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm habited. I'm, I'm literally throwing on the habit. For me, like, this is more important, <laughs> you know, even than my clerics. And and you could bless, you could bless clerical attire too, mm -hmm. which is another, another ritual. Yeah, but like the Catholic Church is a blessing for literally Every, everything. 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 I didn't even get into that, but. Everything. But that, but, you know, calling to mind what you were, what you were sharing is, is, you know, uh, it, it definitely directs that piety and and it and it preserves conscientiously, uh, you know, in the battle, I feel protected like a like a shield that I that I wear around me. And my clerics do that too. When I'm wearing my clerical attire and I have my collar in, it's like, guess what? My vocation goes before me, right? Mm -hmm. And and it makes me mindful of my vocation and who I am. Yeah. And you mentioned your holy oil. So another thing that blessings can do is is it can help restore or preserve health for a person, right? So if someone's sick or if someone's achy, someone's got a particular ailment, there's blessings for that that can help uh, the person, you know, have the spiritual healing that aids the actual physical body. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's something that you have to do all the time. You yeah, know? And, and there may be, like, I have devotional oils. You know, I have I have tons of different devotional oils, like St. Raphael's oil. I have an oil, Our Lady of Guadalupe, or St. Philomena. Oil of Olay, which gives oil. you that beautiful shine <laughs> under, under your eyes. With collagen. Uh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, no, like, I have a number of different devotional oils. They may be called for in certain circumstances where someone's not terminally ill. They don't really need the sacrament of the sick mm -hmm. or, and and that you know the fullness of that sacrament they just may need devotional devotional oil and yeah. to and to use devotional oil so many lay so many laymen and women utilize that devotional oil well, in their in their life what's the difference between the devotional oil of saint rita and our lady of guadalupe i mean is it just oil that you get from the shrines yeah it's or? devotional and and sometimes like the oil of saint nicholas for example Big is deal. is mixed with what's proceeding from his body still mm -hmm. miraculously. So it's mixed with olive oil and Dang. then, and then administered. Yeah. In the early church oils were way more important than we treat them now. Mm -hmm. But for sure, um, one of the big trades and one of the reasons that they took St. Nicholas's body during the crusades um, from Asia minor back to uh, Bari is because it was such a, a site for, um, pilgrimage because people would go there to get the oil off his grave. What? And there's a lot his of his body shit. exuded it. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of saints uh, throughout history where their graves would exude Still? In oil. Yeah. Still? Today? Still. Yeah. His body I went to, is exuding oil. I went, yeah. I went to the I went to the church in Bari and huh. I, I had I bought, I got like a whole bunch of of those oils. I don't think I may have one bottle that I could possibly find. I've given a lot of it away. Wow. Yeah. It's powerful, man. Yeah, the, the the tomb of St. John in uh Ephesus, uh that was a big place. So there's a lot of them and it's you know, associated with the 
odor of sanctity. Mm. Uh, and that was one of the signs mm -hmm. of the early church because they weren't really exhuming people. But if their grave was giving off oil or a fragrant uh, scent, wow. they'd be like, okay, there's something going on here. Yeah. And, and working in a cemetery in a graveyard, like, let me just tell you, like a mausoleum, there's a different odor. So like when there's the oil, oil like the odor of sanctity mm -hmm. is a very distinct smell that I've been able to smell wow. in different tombs of the saints, like mm -hmm. traveling around pilgrimaging. Wow. Um, as this room does not that. have the odor of sanctity. Yeah. It has the odor of Howard. <laughs> uh, or bacon or just, you know, three hey, the, sweaty the odor of bacon is, is very, very uh, <laughs> enjoyable. <Stinks>. Yeah. <laughs> So and there's and there's one more benefit kind of in the in the major benefits of a blessed item is to increase its efficiency or its efficacy, right? So like the blessing of beer, of wine, of farmland, of a water source, right? That it becomes something salutary, something that both produces more yield through the blessings and the benediction of God, but also when you eat it, it also encourages you and gives you the energy to orient your life and towards something that is more beneficial to your spirit, right? So it's like, okay, we're going to bless this food. Well, why are we blessing this food? Well, in Thanksgiving, but also so that it nourishes us so that we can go and and fully live our Christian lives. So again, those four? The four are for to, to incite pious emotion towards a devotion. So piety. Freedom from evil spirits or mm -hmm. defense against evil spirits for the preservation of health or for the growth and efficacy of an item or a resource. Those mm -hmm. are like the the big, uh, you know, benefits of a blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, there are some things that a layperson can bless, right? It's not just all, you know, Mr. Priest over here gets to bless stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. The lady can yeah. do some blessings in our office of pre priest, prophet, and king, right? Uh, we can bless our own food, right? We can bless ourselves. When we make the sign of the cross... That is a blessing as strong as a priest giving it to us, right? Um, a father can bless his children, children yeah. or his wife, and a wife can bless her children or her husband. Mm -hmm. Because even in the sacrament of marriage, it is the spouses conferring the sacrament on each other. And I think the theology of the husband and the wife being able to actually give a blessing on each other flows from that sacramental nature. That's beautiful practice, too. It, it is. really is. And, and a question for you. But can... also, don't do it in a fight. You know, you're in the middle of a fight. Hey, like, come here. Let me bless you. I bless you. And they're like, don't bring Jesus into this. You did this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so a question for you, Sheila. An extraordinary minister of Holy Communion. Yes. Right? Um, in need for pastoral care for, for a large congregation, mm -hmm. maybe just a priest, you know, no, maybe there's a deacon at, at some of the masses. So an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion is sent out. They're not an ordinary. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they haven't been commissioned by the bishop, uh, but they've been commissioned and delegated by the pastor and, mm -hmm. and, and that, uh, you know, associated administration of the priest to operate and function as a minister of Holy Communion, yeah. do they have the right to give personal blessings within the congregation? Um, and, you know, say someone's not able to receive communion because they haven't gone to confession mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, they, they have not yet joined the Catholic faith and they're, they're going through RCIA and they cross their hands over their heart to, to receive a blessing. Um, if they're not going to receive Eucharist, like, do you, you know, what do you think about uh, that? Um, I think technically, no. Mm -hmm. I think the blessings that they give are in the administration or they are able to then perform the right of the distribution of communion, and mm -hmm. the blessing happens through that. Mm -hmm. Now, like Ryan said, you can say bless you to anyone, mm -hmm. right? And you could mean it, and I'm sure there is some grace that flows through it, but the technicality of the blessings as intended by canon law, by yeah. the catechism, I don't think really gives them the right to mm -hmm. make that blessing, but I could be wrong. No, and that's and that's absolutely, that's absolutely right. Uh, those personal blessings reserved within the liturgy of the congregation is reserved to the clerical state. Yeah. So that is your parish priest, that is your deacon, and that is your, uh, your bishop mm -hmm. or, or the Holy Father himself. Um, it is reserved to the clerical state in persona Christi mm -hmm. and, and the authority. The source of all blessings. Yeah, the, the authority that, that and the vocation and the calling of the parish priest liturgically in that setting calls for that blessing. So a big encouragement to all uh, men and women that are practicing in their lady, the <laughs> fullness of their capacity and ministry, you know, that when you're, when you're there and somebody's coming up, 
you know, uh, and they're not receiving Eucharist, it's it's not appropriate uh, to bless. You know, it's not appropriate to so bless. So you go your up in the line. Sisters. Now, if you go up to the yeah. priest, he can give you the blessing. Absolutely. Right. But even that. But even even that's even that's questionable. I always I always bless my children. I always bless you know anybody that comes up. Um, but there's there's deliberation within the body of of our practice as priests that you know that may not be liturgically proper. If I'm blessing some or someone within the Eucharistic line, you should reserve that for the final blessing. I think that's more proper. But I'm also a very loving Italian, charismatic type of person. Yeah. So I troll blessings. Like, okay. Hey, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna troll you a blessing. You that's know what, what I'm mean? blessing. I'm gonna give, I'm you, gonna a give you a blessing. That's it's one of my not favorite scenes. Whatever. <laughs> Rocky too when he's like. Hey, Father, like right before Troll the Father. Yeah, hey, like, Father, hey, Father Carmine. Why don't you throw a blessing down to me so I don't get a beat up too bad? And good yeah. thing Father <laughs> Carmine was a loving Italian priest right. in the middle of the night open. Hey, Rocky! He's like, hey, Book and the Pepper study they should got, you know. <laughs> but like, um. Book and the Pepper. <laughs> I don't know how you Italians work. But, uh, I, you know, I think he's the unsung hero of that story. I mean, he gave Rocky. <laughs> Both the power and the efficacy. Where's the love for the priest, man? The the piety, the I increase of, of vigor to take out Apollo Creed. I love it, man. Right? And Apollo Creed, you know, he was the hands-down favorite, right? Well, no, that was Rocky 1. No, it was Rocky 2. Oh, it was Rocky 2. Rocky 2 is where he gets the blessing. Oh, Boom. I thought that was Look the first Look at one. that. He lost. He, he lost because he didn't get the blessing. He's Rocky like, I'm not making the mistake bro. again. You just blew my mind again. Right? Mind, mind blown. Mind's blown. Yes. Everywhere. Do you Rocky, know what else is a really Rocky cool style. blessing? The priest is the real protagonist. What's a really cool <laughs> blessing uh, on the church for men is the app Exodus 90. Right? Oh, without a doubt. Exodus 90 That's really a big is. Blessing. It really is. It's, it's an app, and it's a program that helps men reorient themselves to Christ, which is what blessings are meant to do. Blessings are not magic spells. They're meant to orient you towards Christ and towards the good. And Exodus 90 does that through... Prayer, fraternity, and asceticism. Mm -hmm. Now, asceticism, that's things like abstaining from unnecessary spending, uh, watching your diet, cold take, showers. taking cold showers, mm -hmm. exercising, setting aside time for uh, your family, limiting your time and your device, right? Utilizing the fraternity finder. That's right. The fraternity finder, Ryan. And then it's that like love of neighbor. Blessing. It's right. an absolute blessing. Uh, over 20,000 men have tried this. Uh, it, people are, go through it all the time. They got a lot of great new features like a fraternity finder. They have daily prayers, reflections. Uh, go to exodus90.com right now and check it out. I mean, it's something that we've all done. It's something the guys over at Exodus are great guys. And men they really, really are. speak about how this program, it's almost like a, you know, like a boot camp to mm -hmm. really get them back yeah. in their manlyhood because the modern world strips that from men. It really turns us into veals. It's like, here's sports, here's TV, here's junk food, here's a couch. Don't do anything consumed. It turns us into veal chops. It does. Veal chops. Veal. And this is telling you no. I'm you know, hungry. be virile, be a man, yeah. go and do something more with your life than being just a consumer. Talk it's about been, virile. There's another program Virility, out there that bro. is, it's true. And, and that's even in the name, that Latin root mm -hmm. means man, yeah. you know, esto vir means oh. be a man. And, you know, when you think about the blessings of, of, you know, Christ and who Christ is manifest in the world, he is fully man revealed and his masculinity and his deposit is something, you know, focusing on Christ restores and enlivens in that virality, our, our manhood. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, big shout out to Exodus 90, but Estovir Expeditions is another program out there yeah. for you to be able to retreat and restore and renew your virality as a man by hiking and, and you know, ATVing, hopping on a, on a you know, like whitewater rafting and, mm -hmm. and just... Praying each day, celebrating You're eating mass. veal chops instead of being turned into it. <laughs> you guys eat really well, too. Oh, Mr. Ryan Dedicross, what would you tell us more about Estovia? <laughs> <laughs> we eat veal chops. No. Um, yeah, just like you said, it's a, it's a, a four-day, three-night, wait, excuse me, four-night, three-day adventure mm -hmm. in the wilderness. And, uh, you know, we have priests come on the, mm -hmm. the, the trip, um, just guys from all over the country. Um, you know, seeking adventure with other Catholic men. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens is the, the grace of God and through the sacraments and the conversations and everything and the adventure, mm -hmm. you know, like just kind of getting out there and 
getting the blood going a little bit. Yeah. Um, Fun and fellowship, man. It's yeah. organic yeah. and it's so productive. It's yeah. it's phenomenal. You come back truly renewed and rested. Yeah. And, and so if you're a guy and you're interested, uh, go to estovere.com. We've got we've got stuff for we get a lot of questions from older men and they're saying, hey, you know, I can't do a lot of crazy stuff. Can I come? Yeah, the answer is yes. We have a lot of different activities. Like mm-hmm. you said, it's very organic. Um, if, if you're, you know, you have some physical limitations, don't worry about it. And we also have one for females. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the pilot, the first one. Um, and that's fiatexpeditions.com. And my wife's going to be leading that in Bozeman, Montana. She's really excited about it. We met. Met, met a lady that was going last on the night, trip yeah, last, last night. night. That was yeah, really cool. So, yeah, big shout out to Karen. Yeah. yeah, and and you guys are doing the same things the guys are. Yeah. So, like, I mean, you're not getting, a, you know, patsy cake uh, adventures here. Yeah. You're, and, you're going and, for it. You know, the, the the diligence that's called for when you're when you're hiking a trail and, like, you know, commitment to come to Journey's End and and sharing that experience with other brothers or sisters in the, in the case of Fiat Expeditions, you know, th- man, that is just such a wonderful accomplishment. And how often do you go? Go on like a a retreat where it's like conference, 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 Boring. conference, point, and it's like and it's talk, 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 yeah, talk. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not what this is, and no. and we we share this too. It's like you know we don't want this to be like so talk heavy. Uh. It's community. Celebrate the liturgy. Keep it simple. Yeah. Have some meals together and just get out and yeah. and you know get God, the heart God rate does up. a lot of the work. Oh man, God he does, does all the heavy it. lifting. He does. He does, man. Yeah. And it's it's so exciting to put something together like this. We've, we've made lifelong friends. It's true. From last year, it's mm-hmm. it's just amazing. And yeah. hanging out with Steve last night was just like a yeah. you know a revival. And then Joe but came to see Joe you. Joe came to see me. Town. Joe Joe drove like hours with his kids yeah. and showed up at eight thirty a.m. for mass. Wow. On the way to Orlando, and it was a huge surprise. Yeah. So, yeah, go to estoverexpeditions.com or Fiat Expeditions. There's going to be links below. Uh, there's very limited spots. Each uh, of mm-hmm. these trips has only got about 20 people because it's something that's manageable. And it's filling up. And yeah. it, you want it to be very close and get to know everybody mm-hmm. and have time with everyone. So yeah. make sure you take action on it. These expeditions are happening in June of July, June and July of this year. Uh, look, man, after the last two years being shut in with COVID, get out, experience some people, experience your faith, and experience the beauty of God's creation. EstovereExpeditions.com. Dot com. Dot com. Um, you know, now talking about Estovere Expeditions and traveling, right? Uh, this is what a, a blessing that I think a lot of people mm-hmm. like is uh, a, a blessing before traveling. Because traveling for a lot of people can be kind of disconcerting. It can be a little be, you know, worrisome. It's like, oh, I'm going on a long business trip. Or I'm just going on a vacation for fun. Uh, so, you know, that's one of the things that you can you can have yourself blessed before you go for a trip. Go to the parish. Your priest will bless you that you, you know, come back in one piece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when it comes to blessings, like a blessing for travel, you know, what I have here in my hands, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, hitting the subscribe button, giving us a thumbs up, is the the book of blessings. There's supplements to this, too. And then what's very practical for a priest is the shorter book of blessings. And this is what I bring into the hospital or, you know, I'm, I'm blessing a house or if someone's traveling, like, yeah. you know, with the Estovir expeditions, this is associated with that as well. And, um, you know, order of blessings of married couples was set up because I, I do that quite a bit. Um so oh, that's a good one, you know. Yeah, going in and just having your marriage blessed from time to time is a mm-hmm. good thing. Now, yeah, you on can an bless anniversary each other. or yeah, that, on the anniversary is a great idea. It's true, um, and to go to mass together, like right. go go, you know, go to mass. I had so many couples this morning. It was yeah. beautiful. That's a I preached blessing. on marriage. It was wonderful. Um, so order for blessing for travelers. So I'm going to pray this over my brothers here for Howard and for, we're all for Ryan and Ryan. Day. Yeah, you're traveling. I was definitely praying for you, my brother, uh-huh. going through that, that snowstorm, that which was, was crazy. crazy. Um, so let's pray. And what's proper, too, is that, that you would use a, a stole, white stole, for blessing. Again, make the distinction between the white and the purple side. And because Pop. I love these guys, I'm definitely using some holy water liberally. Can you make the distinction again about the difference between having your white versus your purple side out there? Yeah, so positive and negative. Yeah, positive and negative grace. So um, positive builds up, negative takes away. So in in the sense of positive, this is extending blessing, um, and then the negative would be. You know, removal of sin. So mm-hmm. you know that's that's an important. Uh, so that would so be the like sacrament of reconciliation yeah. Yeah. or or confession, penance. Um, that's what that's what that would be used for. All right. So this is the order for the blessing of travelers in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
May the Lord, the dawn from on high, who breaks upon us to guide our feet into the way of peace, be with you all. And And with with your spirit. Let us entrust those who are leaving to the hands of the Lord. Let us pray that he will give them a prosperous journey and that as they travel, they will praise him and all his creatures, that they will experience God's own goodness and the hospitality they receive and bring the good news of salvation to all those they meet, that they will be courteous toward all and they will greet the poor and afflicted with kindness and know how to comfort and help them. Brothers and sisters, listen to the words of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And then what was the verse there? This, you know, I don't think you have to. Oh, you're doing the full blessing. Yeah, this I'll do actually, the full this blessing. This is a real blessing. This yeah, this is, is a real simulated. blessing. Right. So this is uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter three, verse three through six. John the Baptist went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. And now we have the intercessions. And the response for the intercessions, and especially if those of you who are commuting right now, you know, joining us on the road, I want you to respond with this as well, or those who are preparing for work today and on your journey to work. The response is, Lord, watch over our every step. God is the beginning and the end of every road we take. In confidence, we call upon him saying, Lord, Lord, watch watch over over our every every step. step. Father, all holy, you gave us your only son as our way to you. Make us follow without faltering wherever he may lead. For this we pray. Lord, watch watch over over our our every step. step. At every moment and in every place, you are near to those who serve you. Keep our brothers and sisters in your fatherly care so that they will find (laughs) that you are with them on their journey, even as they hope to live with you in heaven. For this we pray. Lord, Lord, watch watch over over our every every step. step. You made hospitality to strangers one of the signs of your coming kingdom. Grant that all those who are homeless may find a permanent place to live. For this we pray. Lord, Lord, watch watch over over our every step. step. Lord, save your servants, for they hope in you. And Lord, have mercy. Lord, watch watch over over our every step. step. Let us pray. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) All powerful and merciful God, you led the children of Israel on dry land. Parting the waters of the sea, you guided the Magi to your son by a star. Help these, our brothers and sisters, and give them a safe journey. Under your protection, let them reach their destination and come at last to the eternal haven of salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord remain constantly at your side and in his mercy guide you on your journey in ways that are pleasing to him. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So I could have got there by then. Yeah. <laughs> that was a long blessing. <laughs> that was a, and that's a short blessing. Yeah, and that's more of a resting in a blessing in the context of the full of rites. a formal a right. formal liturgy mm-hmm. and, yeah. and ritual. Mm-hmm. Um and I'm going to extend holy water blessing over you especially. Stop, <laughs> man. Stop. And Howard. You know, because, uh, you know, like Ryan Delacross no. was a perfect example you know. of someone who goes like into zoned out land during the mass, like. Oh, that's called yawning, contemplation. Yawning, yeah. yawning is yeah. contemplation. The better, he's chosen the, the merry better path, <laughs> Father that's Rich. Right. <laughs> Sitting at Jesus' feet and snoozing. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, that that's kind of a, a blessing in the right, in the context of a right. But there's also, uh, you know, like the blessings of the house. I mean, that's something that you should all have done. Invite your priest over, have dinner. If you didn't do it when you move in, do it now. Something right? about the the rite of blessing a house is like, I love the I love the part of the ritual where it says, you know, through the ministry of the priest, Christ Himself enters into your home mm-hmm. to give you peace. Mm. It's beautiful. Um, you know, one of my favorite blessings is the the Easter blessing of your basket. My mom yep. loves this oh, one. Oh, I love that too. You know, cool. Before your Easter meal, you take all your food in a basket, and after mass, the priest blesses mm-hmm. it all. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one time, I was I was at one of those, and they had uh, like boxes of Jello and macaroni and cheese. I'm like. <laughs> Maybe like bring something a little organic, you know? Like, no, that's fine. Uh, potato like, or something. I don't know. Macaroni and cheese and jello not only need to be blessed, they are blessings. Don't be a provincialist, right? 
That some people that might be, you know, what they can afford. All right? It's not all hand <clears throat> lamb. Thank you, ma'am, for everyone else, Delacross. Oh, you know, at at the end of um, at the end of our Easter blessing for all the baskets and the food. Um, I went up to somebody's basket and they had grapes, and I grabbed a few of them in the procession. And I, you're that guy who eats the grapes at the grocery store too, great. aren't you? I did. It was <laughs> great. Yeah, they were delicious. And they're like, uh, "What did you just do?" I hope he washed his hands. Um, the I'm blessing not, of Saint Joseph's table too is something that we need to bring back into full practice as well. What's that? So the blessing of Saint Joseph's, uh, it's it's a whole ritual. Mm-hmm. It happens on the solemnity of Saint Joseph on March 19th, mm-hmm. and which you is know, which is a great respite during Lent to have a nice meal where you're kind of really celebrating. Yeah, yeah. And, and some of the traditions is bread, um, but it could be all sorts of food. But the intention is is that you're going to bring some of that food to the poor. Oh, that's and, really cool. You know, so that's it's cool. it's really, it's great. It, it needs to come back into full focus. Um, Remind me of that this year. I want to do that. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's the excellent. feast day. Well, it's, it's the, the day of conversion. It is. Mm-hmm. In 2002, mm-hmm. that's when I have my conversion. And you are a blessing to the poor, Ryan. Poor I spirit. Poor. Yeah. Yeah, typ- typically, you know, the tradition was more of um, like bread and pastries and and goodies like that um, to celebrate the solemnity and honor Saint Joseph. Yeah, um, but well, there's a Saint food. Joseph cake, I think, too. Mm-hmm. Is there, there is. That Saint sounds Joseph very cake. Italian to me. Oh, it's very yeah. much so. You know, yeah. us Slavs or Slovenians mm-hmm. in particular, we have Saint Martin's Day, which is you know Veterans Day. Um, but that's the day that you'd bless the new wine from the harvest mm-hmm. of the year, Martinstag. And it's, mm-hmm. that was Martinstag. A, it's a whole big thing. Now, uh, I, there's a, there's another one here too, that I want to give a, a shout out to that. Not many people of our generation may have practiced. Certainly the older generations, uh, absolutely remember the, the blessing of St. Blaise. Oh, I love that one. You know, so that's you know, a big thing in my home parish. That, yeah. That's really, really important. Yeah. They and, do it during mass. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And it's the blessing with the candlesticks on the neck. When um, I was a kid in, in Catholic school, on St. Blaise's Day, St. Biagio also, that's his name to Blaze or Biagio, he would come and uh, the priest would go around to every classroom with the candles and, and say it to every every single kid in the school. I don't know why it was such a big deal in our neighborhood, but even the pizza shop in our neighborhood is called Biagio. So it was Dang. like, must have been a very, you know, East Lake thing, I guess. I'm not mm. sure. Mm. But uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. Yeah. And his his feast day comes up February third, so that's coming coming soon. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, and to realize that you go to mass on that day, that's what that you you receive that. Mm-hmm. And it's right after candle mass too, and and those you know the blessing of the candles. And so yeah, there's a there's a lot a lot in this uh, book of blessings. A lot of things to to realize that we have at at our you know yeah, disposal. The uh, the prayer they come so on the, on the feast of Saint Blaise they take two candles. And they hold them crisscross against your throat. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the intercession goes back to St. Blaise saving a choking child who's choking on a fishbone. Mm-hmm. And he was able to pray over him and, and save the kid. But there's the uh, blessing that mm-hmm. you would say during that. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, bishop and martyr, may God free you from every evil of the throat and from every, e- every other evil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So some other things that you can get blessed that I think you should. Uh, when you get a new car... Get that thing blessed. There's a whole blessing for cars and modes of transportation. Mm-hmm. Uh, your animals, right? And a lot of times people do that on St. Francis's feast day. One of my kids, a great little, you know, young young guy, Italian kid, came up. He just got a truck, you mm-hmm. know, and he's like 15 years old, and he was stoked. He's like, Father, I got a truck. <laughs> I was wondering if you could bless it. And I'm like, you got to bring that truck. So he, he drove it up to the driveway of the church, and I brought out the holy water and, and blessed it. And it's, it's exciting, man. I, I, love, I love doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, the blessing of animals mm-hmm. on St. Francis's of Assisi's feast day. We do that every year at our uh, parish. And that's, that's, a, that's a cool thing. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a couple other blessings that I want you to do. Now, th- like I said. This is the benefit of being buddies with a priest, right? You can get your stuff blessed. Yeah. So me and Ryan thought, well, what are some things that are near and dear to us? So we've got a few things. I'm we got some, get my stole. We got some booze. Ah. We got a bottle of uh, Snoop Dogg 19 Crimes wine. <laughs> shout out. Shout out, Kelly. We got a big... <laughs> let, me, let me just say, you know... Kelly Sheil has a great taste in music. Yes, he does. I hate rap music. And Snoop Dogg is, is <laughs> one of her favorite. And a shout out to Nisha James, too, who gave me this bottle of wine. 
We got a plate of bacon. Yeah, I love me some bacon, you guys buddy. Want some bacon? Yeah, I do. Bless well, it first. Bless, okay, uh, I'll wait. I'll it's wait. hard wait. to not eat. And I also got my guitar. Oh, awesome. So you can bless bacon, musical <laughs> instruments, and wine. And I'm like, look, these are things that I think typify us here. So let's let's get that happening. Yes. So here is the blessing of okay, bacon. Okay, what are we doing first? Oh, good, bacon. I'm glad yeah. we're doing bacon yes. first. That way we can, you know, chomp a little bit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, this lard or bacon, that it may be an effective remedy for the human race, and grant that through the invocation of thy holy name, all those who eat of it may obtain health of body and protection of their souls through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Take Amen. It easy. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to eat that one. That had a lot of holy water. Huh? Yeah, man. Look at that. All right. That tastes so much better than regular bacon. How oh, yeah. Howie. Have some bacon, brother. I got some bacon, man. Mm. God's kingdom. It's no Gordon's fisherman stuff, but it's not fish sticks. It's not fish sticks. That's good bacon, man. <laughs> Is that real fish? I'm good. All right. So we got blessed bacon. Mm. Mm. Okay, what are we blessing next? Oh, bless this Snoop Dogg wine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Mm. No, this was uh. Oh. <coughs> the Lord Tenisha, be with right? you. I want to spirit. Let us. Oh, I got bacon in my mouth. I can't. Go ahead, finish your bacon. It's holy bacon. It's holy bacon, so I can talk. Go ahead. Okay, here we go. All right. Bless, O Lord, this drink which thou hast created, that it may be a solitary remedy for all who partake of it, and grant that all who taste of it may, by invoking thy holy name, receive health for body and soul through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, I'm going to say, Spirit. I'm going to go out on a limb here, if that this is the only right blessed bottle of Snoop Dogg wine in the entire world. The, look at that, yeah. And if you, you can sell you, blessed you, items, this would probably be worth a lot. Yeah. But we'll drink it. Hey, Snoop Dogg, if you're listening, <laughs> come on and out. Have a bottle of your Snoop Dogg wine with us. It's blessed. It's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you, Tanisha. <laughs> or um, just use the app that Kelly sent to you and the text that you never responded to. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put that on me. And now, All right, now I got one of my guitars. The moment you've been waiting for. Hey, man, wait, no, take it she, easy. She just wanted to take a little solo here. So, yeah. Do we have it? Here's one of my guitars. Yeah, let me pull it up. This is mm. nice. Yeah, it's an oldie. An oldie, but a goodie? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to pass me another piece of that bacon there. <laughs> what a life we have. Ryan. Don't be flipping Ryan. your holy water at me like hey, that. you need to thank you, Shield. Keep throwing you holy water it. at him. <laughs> you need it. Because I sleep. All right. So this is a blessing of a musical instrument. So if you have a piano, ukulele, guitar, whatever, have you ever done this for Gracie's guitar? No. You're a bad priest. I am. Wow. Gracie. I need to do this. Gracie. Gracie. I'll bless the guitar. Okay. The Lord be with you. And at come spiritual tool. Let us pray. Loving Father, we praise you for your goodness and making the beauty of this world and for calling us to be your people. We thank you for all the gifts you give to your church, especially the gift of music and song. We ask you to bless this musical instrument, bless those who use them to give joy to your people and lead them in praising you more fully. Father, we give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our brother and Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Father, Hit that up with some holy water. I actually used some of the be the bacon grease. That's that's pretty cool, too. That's more rock and roll. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's more rock and roll. That's wanna, more rock and roll. Do you want to do the blessing of animals? How oh, right, come on, I know you're going for that piece of bacon. Oh, you're oh that's a double. You, wow, you guys just bad. ate a whole slab of bacon. That was delicious. Howard anymore? Mm. Howie. Oh, yeah. So, talk a little bit about full bacon. There's a lot of things you can have blessed. I mean, if you're thinking about it, it, it probably can be blessed, right? Again, your house, parts of your body. There's blessings for your hand, your shoulders, your feet. Your office or workplace, if you have a company that's your own, we do this at Fuzadi. We have priests come in and bless our office spaces to consecrate our work to the Lord. Whether you're a religious company or a secular company, it's a good thing to do. I do that all the time, too. What about, is there a blessing for Howard? There actually is. Now, there's specific blessings for fishermen, and since Howard is, obviously, the Gorton's fisherman, uh, we can do the blessing of a fishing fleet. So if he's out there and he's catching all them fish sticks. That's excellent. Right? Yeah. Those, right? Those are the ones. Really, I mean, there's just about anything you can think of that isn't entirely profane, there's a blessing for it. That's perfect. You know, whether it's the place you live, the places you go, how you get there. 
uh, the things you eat, the people you interact with, there is a blessing because all things should be oriented towards Christ, and all things should it's the created order. All things should incite be given back piety. to God. That's right, because right. they're all gifts, and we give them back. Yes. So I think this is a really cool episode talking about blessings. Um, uh, We'll put a link to a site that has the blessings for hundreds and hundreds of things. That way, if there's something that's near to you, you can figure out what you want to have blessed. Yeah, this Um, is a great resource online. Yeah, and go to your priest. That's what, you know, that's what they get paid to do. That's their Mm job. (laughs) <laughs> do your job. Do your job, Richie. Bless Unless things. you're taking a vow of poverty. And then some well, of these guys, you know, they don't get paid at all. Okay, well, that's where that's where that's their job. You know, <laughs> just do your job, Richie. Do your job, Richie. <laughs> well, I'm going to do the job right now. But why don't you close this I, episode with the blessing of our audience? That's a great idea. I was thinking the same thing. Were you? Yes. You're a good priest. Well, thank you. It's a redeemable moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I pray God's blessing over each of you, your families, your friends, your communities, your churches that God may continue to inspire that return, that everything that God gives to us should be given back. In that exitus of reditus of St. Thomas Aquinas, we're in that process of giving return to God, and we want to return that fruitfulness of being good stewards of what God has entrusted to us. So he's entrusted us to you, and we're just so grateful to all of our subscribers, our patrons, and everybody out there following us on all of our platforms. A big thank you to our producer, Howard, the Gordon's Fisherman, who just needs some love every now and then. He does. He's a great guy. And God bless each and every one of you, and we look forward to seeing you next week right here at the Catholic Talk Show.